They call me terrorist, radical, zealot, because I obey the ancient laws of my people, the Kree, and punish those who do not. Hey friends, Greg here. That was Ronin the Accuser, he's a Kree, and you're gonna hear that word a lot over the next few years. The Kree have made their way into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. this year, and will soon be a major part of the upcoming Captain Marvel film. So who are these blue-skinned aliens, and why are they so damn important to the MCU? Let's take a look at their history and find out. But first, make sure to hit that subscribe button to Universe, where we got you covered for comic deep dives, TV breakdowns, and movie reviews. We have videos on Black Panther, and you can check out our spoiler-free review of Altered Carbon right now. Okay, now the Kree have one of the most comic booky tolkien s origin stories that I've ever researched, and that's saying something. Created by the great Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, the Kree made their debut in 1967's Fantastic Four number 65. In their debut, they played the role of the villains taking on the Fantastic Four with appearances by Ronan the Accuser and the Supreme Intelligence. We'll get back to him later. Over the years, the Kree would become an integral part to the Marvel Universe and would be a part of major story arcs such as Annihilation, Secret Invasion, and The War of the Kings. Now the Kree have been around for a long time, over six million years to be exact. The Kree were allegedly spawned by the Zorians, along with all humanoid life forms such as Skrull and humans, from their own DNA. The Kree started out as a primitive species on the planet Hala. They would share the planet with the Kotati, who were a race of plant-like humanoids. Hala was soon visited by the Skrull, whom at the time were a peaceful race. We'll save the Skrull for another day. Now the Skrulls would tell the Kree and Kotati that only one of their species would be chosen to represent their planet in an interplanetary council. To choose what species it would be, the Skrull sent the Kree and the Kotati to our moon and told them to each build a city there. When the Skrulls returned, they awarded the council seat to the Kotati, which as you might have guessed, pissed off the Kree to no end and they would wipe out all the Skrull and Kotati on the planet. The Kree would steal the tech from the Skrull ship and this would lead to the start of the Kree Skrull Wars. Fun fact, during the start of the war, the Kree established a station on Uranus and this would lead to the creation of the Inhumans by experimenting on early humans. Now the Kree were an evolutionary stagnant race and this would lead to the use of the Negabomb. Okay, let me explain. The Kree's evolution was frozen in place due to a single member of the Kree race attempting to gain control of the crystals of ultimate vision. Yeah, bad idea. Not great, Bob! The unnamed Kree attempted to use the crystal to become a king to a god. Instead, he would screw over his entire race and they would be punished by genetically freezing the Kree's evolution in time. <sighs> Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. This unintentionally triggered a series of events that led to the Negabomb being detonated in Kree territory by the Supreme Intelligence. For a little backstory, the Supreme Intelligence is a cybernetic computer system which sums up the mightiest intelligence from all corners of the Kree Empire and continuously flows through its circuits. Due to the evolutionary stagnation, the Supreme Intelligence arranged for a large number of his people to be eradicated with the bomb, killing 90% of the Kree in order to artificially speed up their evolution. It worked, but it came with a few side effects. This new brand of evolved Kree, called the Rule, had a grayish skin tone and a bunch of tentacles atop their head. When you subtract the blue skin, the Kree resemble humans for the most part. They have denser skin with increased muscle flexibility to give the Kree endurance, durability, and stamina, twice the level of humans. They also have duplicates of several internal organs and usually require special equipment to breathe comfortably on Earth due to the low nitrogen levels. Also, some Kree women have the power to reach into the mind of male sex species to manipulate their desires or drain another life force completely. This would be referred to as the Seventh Sense. Over time, the Kree developed a technology to remove the power surgically, and special bloodhounds were used to track down any Kree female reaching the adult age with those abilities. Now some were able to slip past this surgery. We've seen the Kree a few times on screen already. The first is of course Guardians of the Galaxy, which was the Kree's big screen debut and featured both Ronin the Accuser and Korath the Pursuer. Hey, you know what? There's another name you might know me by. Star-Lord. Who? The Kree also play a key role in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Without going into spoilers, the latest season has shown the attempt to prevent the destruction of Earth while dealing with an inscrutable Kree team in the future. 
My servitors must symbolize perfection when they represent me. Finally, the Kree will play a pivotal role along with the scroll in the upcoming Captain Marvel film. Captain Marvel's costume was revealed in a pair of set photos last week and had many wondering why the outfit was green. Now this is speculation, but it seems that the green color may have something to do with the Kree. Now this costume could simply just be passed on from OG Captain Marvel, AKA Kree warrior Marvel, Or Carol may have snagged the green outfit from a fallen Kree soldier after gaining her powers. With set photos out there, don't be surprised to see an official look at Brie Larson as Captain Marvel any day now. Well, we're waiting. All right, that's it for me over here, everybody. Now there's way too much rumor and speculation to the green outfit right now for Captain Marvel, and we're way too far out from that film for us to really deep dive into it at the moment. For now, let me know what your favorite Kree moment is in the comment section down below. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.